Well, I think I forgot one really, really important fact. We've crossed another state. We've come from South Australia, just back there, we crossed the border into Victoria. So, this is the first time our camper van has driven in Victoria State. So, sweet. Sorry I left that one a little un under the covers, I hadn't said too much, but it was a little bit of a lacklustre stop. Um, you couldn't stop. <laughs> so Jude's got some video and a photo of us crossing over into the Victoria border. So here we go. Thank you for welcoming us, Victoria. You could have done a little bit better with the weather. Well, here we go. We've made it to our next town of... Dartmoor. <laughs> hey, well done. Nice little town, eh? Yeah, it's lovely. We, we've uh, just parked the wagon behind us. We're gonna have a walk. It's actually great to see they're actually putting some more, um, where we're staying, they're putting some more fire pits and everything like that. So, great, great little area. Great little area, eh? Yeah, nice. You know, it's not a, not a hustling and bustling little hub, so it's nice and quiet. There's some toilets over here. And um, it's only a short walk into town, which we're going to have a look at some carvings. Some carvings coming on in. They look pretty, pretty neat. So we'll see what it's all about. Here we go. On our little walk up through to the town of Dartmoor. Come through this uh, little horse trough and flume, they call it. Water is super clear. And it comes from a natural spring, which is further up the way. Um, it says the, the water is picked up through the 50 meter wooden flume from the natural spring flow and then it flows through the historic horse trough with the overflow from the trough returning to its original water course. So down here is the, the water course disappearing down here. A little horse trough you can come down here and they can drink from. And the original wooden trough going up there and picking the water off the uh, off the top of the spring. So yeah, nice bit of history there. There was, there, there was some um, Atlantic cedar trees, I think they were called. And uh, as I say, I'm not a botanist, but there's one, two, three, four. Over here is six, no, five, <laughs> five six, seven. Now, I was of understanding back in 1918, they planted um, these cedar trees in memorial for the fallen soldiers in World War One, I, I think it was. But of course, um, sadly, they've um, some of them fell to disease and were a bit of a, a poor risk. So uh, they were uh, cut down, but they were transformed, as you can see the one uh, way up the top there, transformed into a, a work of art, beautiful sculptures. So uh, there they are in their their grand life back there and all their glory. But down here, it's a town that have really taken to this uh, type of chain chainsaw sculpturing and uh, made a, put it on the map. So uh, pretty neat. And along with that, they put on a fantastic um, uh, little RV park back there, little caravan park for us to stay at. So we'll keep walking our way into town. Just coming into view now is one of these Atlantic cedar trees that's been carved, the base of it. Um, it's kind of like a fairy tale type tree. It's got um, characters like, uh, I think the Wicked Witch is there. Um, you've got like, um, is it uh, fish, fish to pile of water? It's like Pooh Bears, um, Seven Dwarfs, I think is in here. Little Red Riding Hood. Um, 
Oh, my nursery rhymes are lacking me a little bit there. Little Jack Horner maybe sat in a corner, is that a pie? Uh, I don't know, use my imagination. Three little pigs, one's been caught. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pop it in comments if you, if you can help me with some of these. There's definitely lots of seven dwarfs around. Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock. Uh, looks like the wooden spoon. Um, oh, what? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it'd be so much easier if there was a little plaque underneath saying what the, each one um, depicts. And the big uh, king up there. So, here we go. Partly uh, the trees, it says here. Just found a little spot here. It says the original cypress trees were planted prior to World War II by the Dartmoor and District Progress Association to beautify the roadside lending to, uh, leading to a, a newly constructed road bridge over the Glenelg River. The trees were lopped in 2006 and carved by chainsaw sculptor Kevin Gilders. And the tree carvings have been finished with water-based decking oil. There's 10 trees along here which Jude's taken photos of. The first one's the nurse. The second one is the sad news. Third one, the boy at war. Fourth one, at arms. Fifth one, three services. Sixth one, over the top. The seventh one, rest in peace. Eighth one, the parting. The ninth one, the game. And the last one, a soldier's life. So here we are, yeah. Dartmoor. Got a memorial up here that shows the avenue of trees. X's marks the trees that are still standing and the circles, the trees that aren't standing. And what they did is that they enlisted a bloke, Kevin, to uh, do a bit of artwork with the timber from the trees, of which they uh, put a, uh, an avenue of the soldiers in their trees here to make the, uh, the legend live on. So it's quite neat, quite fitting for the town. Okay, just before we leave, um, Jude's been in there talking to three lovely ladies. They um, meet in here around about three times a week and they do some quilting. Some of their work here you can see outside. Um, now, they donate those quilts to the Australian Valour, which is uh, towards the Australian Defence and Veterans. So, uh, big shout out to you girls. Thank you there for your contribution. Oh, and if you're in the Dartmoor area, Pop in and have a look at a piece of history in there. A lady in here, apparently part of the, uh, the Greenham family who originally built this building. Now this was a general store back in uh, 1870. He built this, he built the church, and there was something else that he built too. Um, no. And this in front of me was the Princess Highway to Melbourne. So uh, I've now worked out, of course, the 250 sign down here is how many miles to Melbourne from here. So the bridge has uh, been moved uh, this, this sort of went down Glenelg River and across the Glen Glenelg River and gone. So yeah, neat little stories. Um, the carvings, yeah, definitely they were um, basically carved, I believe, in the areas that the trees were. And of course, um, yeah, they're all being done up there. And then the other avenue of trees, the seven um, down there, they're all, they're all planted at different times with soldiers. So I think there's a, a World War I avenue going up that way. And she tells me that there's a World War II avenue going over this way. I'll just walk on up this way here and uh, show you the, uh, the church that, uh, was it Grenham? 
built as well. It's a nice little church. And uh, there's a little story about a, uh, a police station that goes missing. I'll try and find it. But here's the, uh, the St. George Church built in 1885. And uh, this was built by the same bloke that did the general store. How cute is that? Right, Jude's on the move. I'm gonna catch up with her. Well, here's a, here's a funny one to put Dartmoor on the map. And uh, yeah, I've had it on good faith from a, uh, a local that told me about the story. As you can see, the police station behind me. Around about uh, 10, 15 years ago, somebody came and sawed the old police station in half and nicked off with it. <laughs> it wasn't until the, the group came back for the other half, they basically said, hey, uh, you can't take that other half. Now, I don't know why they didn't book them there and then, but uh, they went away, came back a few days or a week or so later, a lot of raucous, picked up the other half and drove off with it. So yeah, historic building and all. And uh, I said to her, I said, well, you know, what happened? Did you, did you find it? And he says, oh yeah, yeah, we, we found the, the building. Uh, it's down in Port Ferry somewhere. And uh, the lady that's living there, all in good faith, reckons it's all her, her, her building. You can just imagine a knock on the door saying, hello, 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 copper's here. We want our house back, you stole it. <laughs> It's a pretty cool one, that one. And I, th I think I could be wrong. That plot of land may be it. There's the new copper house there. That's a good story. I like that one. Well, here's our lovely campsite at uh, Dartmoor. We're down at uh, Fort O'Hare. Look at this, beautiful. It's got a, uh, sadly, it's uh, fire ban season now. So we can't use the fire pits, but there's beautiful fire pits around the places, some chairs and some tables. We've got some uh, good solar input and some good uh, start, well, no, <laughs> we're trying to get some good solar input, but we do have some good Starlink um, through here. Um, they're working hard at putting a few more fire pits and things around, I suppose, ready for next season. And yeah, there's a bunch of camping spots all the way down and through here, but uh, we elected not to go into there because it uh, upsets our uh, solar and our uh, Starlink. So uh, well, we're out in the open. But it sure is nice to smell the uh, the bush. Last night was smelling the salt here. Here is smelling the bush and hearing the beautiful tree, uh, the the birds in the trees. But down here's a monument I want to go and have a look at. So uh, we'll check it out. Here we go down the bottom end of uh, the Dartmoor Township. We're down in Fort O'Hare. This is the the campground that we're we're camped at. And there's an obelisk here. No, it's not guiding ships into a port or anything. Major Mitchell, Major Thomas Mitchell. He was an explorer, a bit like our uh, explorers I've met along the way. Um, old the Stuart and um, the Goiter line, yeah. So this is a bloke that was similar to those guys. 1836, he set out to basically open up the uh, Victorian central and western areas for farming and agriculture letting them know where the best lot, the, the land is, uh, where water can be found and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, he did pretty well right here because it's uh, the junction of the Glenelg and the Crawford River. So uh, found it a good spot to, to park up. 17th of August, 1836. Thomas, Major Thomas Whit Mitchell. Good little spot, the junction. Day, and everything feels right We're interconnected We have the world in our eyes I promise I will catch you whenever you fall Take my hand and we'll go through it all Loving you is all I Morning, testing, testing. Yep, good morning. Right, crack a, star, a stay there at uh, that Dartmoor um, 
uh, Forto here campsite. Highly recommended, lovely little town, great people to talk to. Uh, we've got rid of our you know what and uh, come a little bit, just a little bit around the corner, it's still Dartmoor, and I'm filling up with water right there. Now, I'll show you where we are getting our water from. Um, and before people start going panic, 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 we do um, run uh, our hoses through the water filter and we've got, what do we got, an, um, an, an algic, um, Kangen water system inside as well. So for drinking water, we run it through that for purification. Um, but yeah, this is just, uh, yeah, it's going into our tanks. We'll show you when it's uh, hooked off. There's no tap as far as turning it on and off. That thing is just running all the time. But we're not wasting water because it runs from there back to where it came from. Now you might have realized that um, in my earlier talk, there was a, um, a spring which had a horse's trough and they drank water from that trough the horses did. Um, also I think the spring fed a train that came through Dartmoor there, the railway, the old railway was still showing. But yeah, here I am filling up at this beautiful spring. I guess we'll call it Dartmoor Spring, it doesn't have a, a label on it at all. But she's uh, running underneath the bridge down here. It looks beautiful clear water. And there's a lot of flow to it. So I'm really intrigued of how that water is flowing out of that tap. I mean, whether it's pressurized by some kind of pump, pressurized by ground pressure, or just natural fall. But it, it, was, it was fair pumping, probably a little faster than some uh, town supply. But there you have it. On to our next destination. Alright, now just coming into view now is uh, one of these uh, 